Ok. Ok, ok, ok. Hey, yo, everyone. Uh, I see there are more and more people who are joining. Uh, yeah, we have more and more people. Let's just wait for the another 10 or 15 seconds before we start because just, you know, every single second I see that more and more people are joining the webinar. Um, so we are going to start in just 10, nine, <laughs> eight, <laughs> seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's start. Um, woo! Um, hey, yo, everyone. Okay, let's start. Um, my name is Ilya, and I'm extremely happy to see you all today. Um, thanks a lot for signing up for the webinar. Thanks a lot for joining it today. And before we start, let me share with you a bit more details, and then I will not take uh, take too much time. Um, so the first thing is that my name is Ilya. I'm a growth market manager at Expandi, the LinkedIn automation software that helps thousands of companies generate sales leads out of LinkedIn outreach. And during the last few years, I've noticed that, you know, LinkedIn outreach and the outbound lead generation, it's not easy. I mean, like 90% of people, like the majority of people, don't know how to get the results they want out of LinkedIn outreach. And, um, and that's why we decided, okay, what if we talk to some you know, top A-level players on this LinkedIn growth and outreach market and just ask them to share their approaches, their secrets, their growth hacks with the audience, with all of you. And today uh, we're going to talk to team. Uh, and before I say hi to team, please, everyone, please right now, click on the chat button and say hi from your location. Um, like, uh, hello from Italy, hello from Norway, just do it right now. And while you're doing this, I, I'm i happy to say, hi team, how are you doing today? I'm well and excited to, to do this with you. Oh, oh my God, I see so many people, Manila, London, Ohio, Italy, India, Ukraine, Germany. Hi, Manuel. Hi, Brenda. Hi, David. Hi, Kiran. Hi, Yawa. Hi, Cindy. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and um, there are a few things uh, that I'll be super, super happy to say to you before we start. The first one is that if you have any questions, please push the button Q&A section and ask your questions. I will interrupt team during the webinar and ask your questions. Or after the like after Tim's speech, I will I will ask him um, the questions so you can get the answers. The second thing is that this webinar will take up to one hour, up to sixty minutes. And the thing is that I saw the web, uh, I saw the, the you know the presentation. I already know <laughs> I already know the content. And spoiler you will see and you will get value on every single page of Teams slide. So please stay till the very end because on every single slide, you'll find something valuable. That's a small spoiler. And the third thing is that let me introduce you, Team. So actually, you probably already know Team uh, if you're a part of LinkedIn Outreach Family. That's our closed Facebook community group. Um, and if you're there, you probably already know Tim, just because Tim is constantly sharing his growth hacks, results, approaches with the community. And if you're not part of the community, I will share with you right now the link so you can join it during the webinar or after the webinar. So you can find so much valuable information and so much valuable, you know, growth hacks about around LinkedIn grows within that community from us, from Tim, from 4 K other people within this community. So I'm sending you the link. So please join it right now. And let me introduce Team. Uh, for those who don't know who uh, Team is, so Team Dot is the founder of JTD Group. He specializes in helping technology companies get new businesses. 
His clients include AppDev, MSP, MSSP, and SaaS companies. He offers the following outsourcing sales services. Done for you, aka managing your LinkedIn profile to generate leads for yourself. Done with you, aka coaching, and do it yourself, aka training. Tim has a degree in computer science from the University of Delaware. He has a passion for travel, trekking, and brewing beer, and has done an around the world trip. And today, Tim is going to share how he is generating thousands of SQL leads, I mean, like sales qualified leads, not only just replies and not the empty metrics, but actual sales qualified leads on a monthly basis for his clients in a variety of industries. So, Tim, the stage is yours. Um, say hi to the audience. I appreciate everyone joining. I know uh, we were getting a little tight on the uh, the registration, so hopefully you all registered before the uh, the cap was uh, reached out. I know a few people uh, are going to get recordings on this, but for everyone that's live, I really, really do appreciate you guys coming out. And this has been a really fun presentation to to work with Ilya on. So I'm uh, hopefully you guys are ex excited about the presentation uh, that I am. So I will share my screen real quick. And uh, before we start, so, tell us yes. in, the, in the chat, uh, can you see the screen that team is sharing? So just say yes, no, yes, 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 yep, yep, yep. yep. Oh, okay, all good. We don't have any technical problems, which is pretty good. Hi from Vietnam. Hi. Um, so team, let's start. Awesome. So I appreciate everyone coming. Uh, I know uh, I met Stefan years ago um, before COVID and just early, early on and just was amazed with the quality of product that he has. So I, I love Expandy. So I, I, I don't make this commercial about Expandy, but if you aren't using it, uh, check it out. And I know he's a big superhero. If you follow him on LinkedIn, he's got his little superhero icon. So this is the slide that I would have done um, if I would have gotten to pick. Uh, and the goal is that, you know, we want to take what we're doing here and give you all the power of AI and have you be the next the next Tony Stark. So what I'd like to talk about is what is working uh, today, what isn't working. So I, I want to kind of level set where everything is. I feel like pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID, everything's different. Um, so I want to just set the table um, early on and then really dig deep into the examples. And my goal is you guys are going to walk away with 10 sales qualified leads next month with some of the, the tips and tricks and growth hacks that I'm providing in this deck. So the biggest thing that our clients are seeing is they want sales qualified leads. And in Q1, a lot of them weren't even getting leads. So that's why for me, it's very important to talk about SQLs. And the way I define it is using a terminology that people on the call that are sales know, which is BANT, you know, who's the budget, the authority, the need and the timeline. So we want to have three of the four of BANT to qualify it as a sales qualified lead. And then deals are taking longer to close. Clients are expecting quicker time to value. So we wanted to decrease that for ourselves and our clients. So for anyone that doesn't follow the state of the sales report, uh, salesforce.com does this amazing report and it really sheds light on a lots of different trends. But for the purpose of this talk, a quarter of our time we're really selling, right? So one of our challenges as sales reps is we've got so much other things to do that we have to do or we're not interested in doing for sellers we want to sell. So this is just a, a bunch of you know administrative stuff that none of us like doing. And when you talk to clients out there, you know, they're asking for time to value. They don't want to wait three months to get a deal. They want they want instant value. And so we're seeing that. And so what we need to think about in this deck is, are there things that we can do to get that time to value quicker for ourselves and our clients? So what is not working? There's really three big things, but I've, I've bucketed into eight. The first is if you're still living in 2020, the connect and pitch slap isn't working. So if you're going in and telling someone that you're an offshore app development company and you do everything and you're the cheapest, you're probably getting a very low response rate. You're doing email marketing, you're probably getting a very low response rate. That does not work. And I would re recommend following some of the, the tricks that I have here instead. 
The second is even if our process works and all of those things go, if we don't understand who our ideal customer profile is, then we're not going to be successful. We're just going to go and outreach to the wrong people. And we need to get into Sales Navigator and understand who those actual people are once we've identified what our ICP is. And then on the lower right, we want to talk to people as individuals. Social selling is about me selling to Ilya or Ilya selling to me. It's a one-to-one -one personal relationship, just like it is offline. So we need to think about how do we engage these people on a one-to-one -one basis, even though if we're selling to the enterprise, there might be dozens of people that are involved in, in that decision. So don't connect and slap, understand your ICP and really target those people on a personal one-to-one -one level. So this is a great example. Uh, so Daniel may be on the call. So what happens with people is, you know, Stefan and the team, they really give us some really good advice on these blog posts about what to do. And then we just copy and paste exactly what they do. So our prospects and our clients are seeing the same messaging that is really from the blog post. A guy, John Barrows, uh, said it really well. He said, I can tell if it's a sales loft or an outreach uh, campaign based on the email that he's getting. So let's not do this. We're going to talk about ways that we can really personalize this and, and step, up, step up our game. So the first thing is AI, right? So I, I, I talked about, you know, we can only spend a quarter of our time doing AI. We can now spend, you know, 90% of our time selling. So let's think about how we can use AI to get rid of all these administrative tasks and the things that we don't want to do so we can do the things that we're passionate about. Like in Stefan's example, you know, going to $10 million in revenue, where my example, going on vacation and trekking and hiking and traveling. I want my engine to run while I'm traveling the world or doing my other things. So let's figure out how AI can help us. So what is working is using the tools to build trust and engagement. So I mentioned you know, Daniel's profile earlier. He's got a tool called Fist Bump. It really helps you comment on people's profiles. Start engagement, start in a conversation with these people, and then earn the right to pitch them a conversation or a meeting. Understand your decision makers. So you can go in and really go into Sales Navigator, pull out your list up to 200 or 2,500 records, pull it into a WISA. It's $50 a month and you can verify that if you're a lead generation company and you're targeting IT, I am not your ideal customer profile. You can easily see that by pulling out a WISA and just looking at my headline. But so many people won't take that step and there's so little outreach that we can do with the constraints of LinkedIn that we're just wasting time sending connection requests to someone that's not our ICP. <clears throat> Apologize. <clears throat> and then we talked about the people. Like, <clears throat> let's use AI to customize that one-on-one -on -one interaction and really build um, the engagement and, and that relationship. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> sorry. go ahead. Before we go to the next slide, um, Right now, I'm running the poll, so please answer on this poll. So actually, it's about your main challenges, so we know you better. Uh, tell us what's your main challenges when it comes to LinkedIn. And while team is sharing, um, the next few slides will collect on this information that we'll share it with you. Uh, team, sorry, go ahead. Yes, take the poll, because that will that potentially will impact how I, I deliver the rest of the uh, the rest of the presentation. So it's like choose your own adventure. So in 2023, social selling, email, and cold calling are not enough. You have to have an omni-channel strategy. This is how it's working very well. And you're getting a disproportionately positive impact on your results if you do the three together. Just doing one individually or not in a cohesive, coherent, omni-channel approach you're just not going to get the results that you want. And it's a lot harder to get meetings now than it was three months ago. So let's let's break this down. Am I frozen? All right. So these are the questions that I ask my clients from an ICP perspective. Three months ago, I would make them fill out a four to six page document and they'd have to guess everything. But this is the things that matter. What matters to your customer or prospect personally? to their role, to their organization, and to our relationship. 
what are the goals that they want to get? Let's make sure that we're all on the same page and where we're trying to get to in one, three, six, 12 months. And what are the KPIs that we want to track to do that? And then the basic questions about their offer and the value, their pain points, those types of things. But give your customer a simple 10 question to fill out. And then what you can do with the power of, G, of chat GPT is ask it. So now I don't need to ask my client to fill out a six page document. I just create a persona and then I validate that against my client. And you're going to get a lot of insights into your customer and your customer is going to get a lot of insights by asking chat GPT. So this is the first step of building that relationship with your customer as you onboard them is to use AI to, to get some really valuable insights that you're bringing to the table instead of my old way of asking them to fill out a six page document. And it makes you be the expert in, in your customer's uh, mind. So now Stefan wants to reach out to me. So early, early on when ChatGPT um, came out, I was using a tool. I still use the tool called ChatSonic, which is part of WriteSonic. And I had access to the internet and I have public profiles of most of my prospects. So I would act as Stefan and ask the prospect um, what they, you know, what, what they're doing, right? Um, so act as Stefan, prospect is Tim, write a connection request for Tim Dodd. And that's where the power of ChatGPT comes. And you can play with this. You have a lot of characters that you could put into your prompt. You have a lot of workflow. If you if you put the workflow in the right response, you'll get much more powerful answers. So this is just a sample. Check out Stefan's blog. He's got a bunch of other um, content around really developing your prompt. Prompt engineering is a craft, but this is just a basic example. It pulls out that I'm doing sales and marketing. So now I have a custom message. I'm reaching out on Google email. All of my clients are getting a hundred different unique messages. So there's some personalization there, same on LinkedIn. So I don't get the Daniel example of him getting the same messages from 16 different people. Tim, so go ahead. Before we come to the next slide, actually I would like, I would love to share with you the results. And actually, the results are here. So, I mean, like the majority of people still have the issue with low reply rate. Um, and the next one is personalization. That's already like the topic that, that you're starting showing. And still, a lot of people have issues with finding the right ICP. And like, they still don't know how to leverage several channels. And the thing is that right now, it's, it's super interesting. Right now, team is going to share about more about personalization and how to increase your low reply rate to have it high. So um, yeah, that was just like a small interruption uh, you know, to share some results of this poll. Uh, almost everyone answered. So thanks a lot, guys. Let's go. Awesome, thanks to everyone. So, so now we wanna you know, we want to scale and I mentioned, you know, ChatSonic. So, so these are the steps that we're using in, in the Google Sheets. So there is a blog. So if you're not in the, you know, in the LinkedIn outreach community on Facebook, you know, become a member and check out that because they go into the same steps and it shows you exactly what you have to do. There's YouTube videos on this, but this is a very powerful way that you can export your list from using WZA, right, from Sales Navigator, and then do the customization, and then we can bulk upload those results into, into Expandy. And I'm happy to, you know, go offline with anyone that wants to walk through that, um, but that's the basic, you know, the basic process of getting the, the personalization. So once you've uploaded those unique, you know, uniqueness, there's a custom tag that you're going to use as part of your campaign. And that's where what I did as an example, I pulled out the executive team of Expandy and said, let me come up with some personalization. And then I would put that into the message. So that is how you're going to get some uniqueness. And you could have some basic things, like if you're called to action, you want to be consistent, or there's certain things that you want to put in your message, you can, but just have a little bit of personalization so that they know that it's more than just their first name or their industry, or that you read a post from them that you, you took the time to read their profile. And that 
can be done with ChatGPT. Once you've taken that personalization, you've got to get beyond the basic functionality of Expandy because now you can have these multiple sequences where you can go and, and look like you viewed their profile. So now when I send them an email, they'll look and see that it looks like I viewed their profile, right? And now I can send out the email. I can send out a message. So this is a really important step because 99% of the people using LinkedIn automation aren't doing this. And some of the people that I reach out to that maybe they know that I use automation, it's so personalized that they just think I'm reaching out to them. And so it doesn't come off spammy and it, it gets you much better results in your reply rates. And then obviously getting meetings and book to sales and getting those sales qualified leads. So get in the advanced builder of Expandy and build out the workflow. And it gets way more complicated than this, but I just want to give an example for people that aren't using the email function or using some of the features like follow or view profile. So historically, if you've uh, you know paid attention to me, I've talked about the Agogi sequence. A lot of companies are using it. I've pivoted to what I call the Justin Michael method. Uh, so Justin Michael is on the lower right. And what I'm trying to do is automate things as best I can, but also interrupt people's day. So I can send out a LinkedIn message. I can drop a voicemail. I can do an email. Justin calls that a triple. Then in day two, you'll get a bump. So you'll see people email you and then you know they've reached out to you on LinkedIn. No one's picking up the phone. So if you're doing just an email and you're doing just a LinkedIn message and you pick up the phone, you can reference that, hey, I sent you an email, I sent you a LinkedIn. When I've done that, not a single person doesn't know who I am at that point. So this really gets your client and your prospect to know who you are. So when you have a call, they're able to have an intelligent conversation with you. And it's giving me 12 meetings for every 100 prospects that I'm doing. The industry average is 2%. So if you're just cold calling, it's 2%. I'm getting 12%. It's because I'm doing this LinkedIn and email automation in advance of that call. So that's where the omni-channel approach is very powerful. And there's all kinds of other stuff in here. Um, so I'll give you some resources at the end to learn this in more detail. So what it does for you now that I'm using ChatGPT is I'm crafting my responses. And then I'm able to personalize my voicemail or my call uh, when, I, when I talk to a customer, similar with the LinkedIn and the email. So this is just an example of a, a script that I did. Some uniqueness, you know, people have asked me what an ICP is in my outreach, so I don't spell it out. I try to keep it less than 50 words. And I try to interrupt their day with grammar mistakes, which I'm great at. So this method works very well for me. I misspelled my former employer, Oracle, when I reached out to Oracle partners. So just simple mistakes. They think that I'm just quickly sending them a note and it's creating better engagement because it doesn't look automated to them. So don't, don't you know, worry about making mistakes. It, it makes you look like a real person. It makes you look like you're not using automation. So here's some examples of, of the outreach and you can see how quick people are responding because I'm giving them something of value. I'm, I'm you know, leading them to, to where I want, you know, want them to be. And it's, it's working in a very powerful way. So for people that are getting 1% email, you know, meetings or 1% meetings from that, I'm usually getting a 30, 40, 50% reply rate. So in LinkedIn, just using Expandy, you should be getting a 30% connection rate you should be getting a 30% reply rate, right? But now imagine if you're getting a 40 or 50% reply rate, it's, it's exponentially huge for your business and for your clients. So anyone that follows me on LinkedIn uh, probably knows about this post. So the goal of the post was I asked 25 people that were influencers, who are their influencers? And I created a top 100 list and was able to build that out and share that on social media. And because all these influencers know how the game is rigged on the algorithm, started engaging on it, liking it, resharing it, and the post almost went viral. So that's impressions. No one really should care about impressions, but I wanted to share what that is. But what's been more powerful is by killing it, I was able to celebrate a single 
group of 25 people at a time. So then they all would engage. So now I've built trust and credibility with the influencer community of my ideal customer profile. And now I can build relationships with them. If I just did a single 100 post, I wouldn't have gotten the same level of engagement across it. So you can see where the up and down arrows hit as, as additional posts went out that week. And then on the left really gives you the, the playbook um, that I use to do it. And I advise my clients to do this. So if you're in blockchain, come up with a list of top 10 influencers in blockchain. You'll start building your, your network very quickly, building credibility, and then your, your ICP is going to be paying attention to you. So the other trick that I use now that everyone's paying attention to me is I create polls and I created polls last year and no one likes polls, but polls are freaking great. The reason polls are great is you're asking them of their pain points and you have a solution for every answer that you give in the poll. So what I do is I use Expandy direct messaging, asking people a hundred people a day to vote on my poll, my ICP, and influencers of my ICP that I know will comment and engage and drive traffic to my poll. So you create the poll, you then use Expandy to direct message people. When they vote, then you thank them for voting and then you give them something of value. It could be a, a webinar that makes sense for them. It could be a blog post that you do that makes sense for them. Whatever it is, give them something of value. You're not trying to sell them. You're building your expertise, your credibility, and your trust with them. Then when you go and ask them, they'll start a conversation with you. And if you add email to this, you're going to have almost 100% view rate that someone is going to see your content. So you don't have to worry about playing the algorithm game. Just send them a direct message, send them an email, ask them to vote on your poll or ask them or like recommend your content. Say, hey, I'm sharing this on LinkedIn. I thought you would enjoy it. So you know that they're going to see your content. So what can you do? So everyone should be following and ringing the bell of influencers that add value to you and your customers, your partners, and your ideal customer profiles on LinkedIn. And then you should be engaging with them on their post. So if someone is dormant, like a lot of my IT people just don't post on LinkedIn, when they do, I see it in my feed and then I comment first and then I do something other than like on engagement. So the heart symbol, the light bulb, the celebrate, you know, you got a new job, celebrate. If you're gonna comment first and then you're going to engage on the like comment or, or the like or the other buttons, it's almost 100% guaranteed that they're gonna see your content. And now you've got them hooked whenever they log into LinkedIn. And most of your clients aren't gonna have 20,000 influencers. So they're gonna see your content. You've got to have an omni-channel approach, LinkedIn, email, cold calling, warm calling, all in an orchestrated fashion. That is important. Now, what's the hook? Is the hook just a blog post? The hook could be, hey, join my podcast, 30-minute discovery call if they join your podcast. Join my private roundtable with other thought-provoking leaders that are struggling with the same thing that you're struggling with. Have one of your super fans, your your customers be part of that private roundtable. Now everyone's vulnerable. They'll share with you in private and let your customer or your super fan partner sell you in the roundtable, not you selling. You're asking good questions to show that you're knowledgeable in your subject by asking good questions. Your customer partner is selling you and saying how great you are. So those are the two biggest ways that we're getting meetings in 2022, and we're still getting meetings like this in 2023. And then from a cold, oh, go ahead. Um, sorry, uh, just a few questions from the audience, especially when it comes to you know, like those slides. Uh, the first question is um, just to like, just to share with everyone, the question from, um, from the Q&A section, it's, what are you using to send voicemails or are you doing that manually? Uh, can you please share it? Just like five minutes ago, uh, then we're uh, asked this question. 
Perfect. So bullet number four, there's two ways to do it. So there's a tool called Orum, O-R-U-M. It's low cost. It works great. You can drop the voicemails in there. It's an auto dialer. So when you pull out maybe a thousand contacts from Expandy for link, from Sales Navigator, what I do is I pick the top 100 of those are my calling. So either it's a really big enterprise account that I know if I get in, it moves the needle for my customer, or they're engaging in your content. They're engaging on your website. They're opening your emails, but they're not taking a meeting. So I work with my clients to pick the top 100, and then I use my auto dialer. So now I can block out an hour of my day and cold call or warm call all of my customers. So you send out the emails, the LinkedIn's in the morning, four o'clock, you stop any automation outreach, and then you use the auto dialer. And then if someone picks up, you say, great, uh, they don't know who you are. You say, well, I sent you an email and a, a LinkedIn message, then they know who you are, or you leave them a voicemail. So that's what I recommend for smaller agencies. If you can afford it, or in my case, I make my clients pay for it, I use a tool called Connect and Sell. What Connect and Sell does is it allows me to sit on my phone or my headset, and it will go through and warm up the calls and then direct the calls to me. It's a little bit schizo because you don't know who's calling you, but my call scripts are so generic that I don't need to necessarily know who they are. I can just ask good questions, and I'll find that out on my call. My goal isn't to sell them something on the call. It's to book a longer meeting to be the discovery call. So Orem, if you don't have a big budget, or Connect and Sell. Connect and Sell is around $1,500 a month. So I use that for my clients that will, will, will pay for that. Yeah. And um, one, one, sorry, one more question, and then we can, uh, we can go on. Um, just to clarify about your approach uh, when it comes to several steps in engaging with people before you actually try to connect with them and sell to them something. Um, Daniel is just double checking uh, this point. Did you say emoji or reaction first or comment first when engaging? Can you please share one more time what is your approach when it comes to, okay, you have the list of people, what you're actually doing, like step-by-step -step thing. So do you try to sell them right away? Do you try to connect with them? Do you try to like send an email? Something like this, just because I see that some people are just asking this one more time. Can you just briefly explain it one more time? Thanks a lot. Yep. So if I'm doing it with, with Expandy, there's a function in the build, you know, the build program that allows you to follow the person. So my recommendation would be follow them, right? And not not immediately connect, right? So you don't want to you don't want to connect and pitch. So then what I, I try to do is I try to ring their bell so I can see all of their posts. And then I try to comment on their post. So in Sales Navigator, there's a function that says, you know, have they post, posted on LinkedIn in the last 90 days? So I usually use that filter under the spotlight feature of Sales Nav to, to get that. So by commenting first, you're gonna start building a relationship with them, right? So that's generally what I do. So since I don't wanna go and do a hard sell on LinkedIn, a lot of times I'll just follow them and send them an email. And that'll be my my first touch point for them. And then maybe on the second outreach, I can you know send them a connection request and, and do that way. Now the, the growth hack outside of that is if you comment first, LinkedIn treats that as an engagement. So it will give you more power by commenting and then liking it. A lot of people are using automation to like post, and then you're gonna maybe go in and comment. So if you do it by commenting first and then doing the like, ideally heart or, or um, a like bulb, then the person knows that you're not using automation and LinkedIn rewards you for that and they'll see your content. So for your C-level, your, your really important people, I manually do that. At volume, if they're not, like if I'm stalling into you know, Expandy and they've got 200 employees, I might ring the bell of the executive team, but I'm not gonna go and, do that for every employee, but maybe I want to go out and reach out and try to engage and connect with every employee. Does that make sense, Ilya? Uh, yes, thanks a lot. Okay, my my brain sometimes doesn't work. 
Yeah, let's let's continue. So the, the, there's a Wall Street Journal article that's really powerful that I've been using with my clients. They want short-term value. So if you have a customer that you're ramping up their profile and they're new to LinkedIn or, or they haven't been active, like one of our clients wasn't active on LinkedIn for 13 years. They had a profile, just didn't do anything with it. The quickest way is to follow, ring their bell and engage in their content. So while... Expandy is ramping up on their automation to where you can send 100 messages a day. It's really important to start engaging and on the content in that first month. And then you're going to have a much better success with the automated outreach because all of those people are already getting engagement with you from the, you know, that, that, pro, that uh, manual process. So that is what we're coaching our clients to do or we're doing it for them. And we're having a huge uptick in value of getting in front of the ICP by just commenting on their posts. So I'm not, I'm not paying attention to time. All right, so we got a good amount of time here. So the proposed solution that I would say to you is Jarvis is a really great tool for Iron Man, but now we need to go to Vision, right? So anyone in the Marvel Universe knows that Vision is, is Stefan. So what's the vision? The vision for Stefan is to go to $10 million and he needs to go quick. And maybe he didn't have a LinkedIn profile. So how do we do that quickly? Let's use Sales Navigator. Let's spend our time in ChatGPT understanding our ideal customer profile. And then let's use Wizza and take the time to review our prospects. We probably are only doing a thousand a month. We're wasting our time and we're losing social proof by targeting people that aren't your ICP. So take the extra step and validate your list. This will help you get better results. The other thing is optimize your profile for search engine optimization. It's really important that people can find you, right? Like I go and look for my name on, on Google and I get some happy astronaut guy, but I'm second. And there's another guy that has my name that has a lot more social proof on his profile than I do, but I know how search engine optimization works. So I outrank him. So if people are looking, they're going to go, Ooh, yeah, the astronaut guy, he's really cool, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for help with my sales and I'm in tech. Great. So Tim Dodd, me, Tim Dodd is the right person for that, that person. He, he doesn't go to any other social seller named Tim Dodd. Don't overpost. I recommend at a minimum, one solid post a, a, a week. Most of my clients and I do two to three. I think that's more than enough. You don't, you're not going to be the next Gary V or the next Stefan. So you don't need to be posting every day. Let them sit for 24 hours and, and get engagement and, 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 um, and get some flight on that. And you'll start seeing an uplift. Like I can post once a day and get the same level of engagement on my posts as if I post a really good post at the beginning of the week, and I'll still get that same lift every week as people engage and see my post. And then I mentioned Daniel. So do not reach out to Daniel with generic expandy comments, right? Comment on his thing. Don't, similar messages don't work with him. Download fist bump, get some commenting strategy going on. If you're using VAs from the Philippines or offshore, or you like me, I suck at grammar, Fist bump is great. It'll give you a couple different options and tell the VA or yourself, pick one. But it's going to be grammatically correct. It's going to add value. It's, it's going to be better for you than just sending Daniel, you know, a generic post that you read from Stefan on, on, on the same message that everyone else reading Stefan's post is going to do. And by the way, uh, so the person, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, that's a pretty interesting thing that Fergus um, in the chat asked us uh, how are you actually like using these comments uh, in terms of like do you automate it, this somehow? This is actually the answer on your on on, on your question. Um, thanks all for highlighting this team. And by the way, there is one more question, especially when it comes to comments um, on the people's uh, uh, LinkedIn accounts. Um, the question is. How many engagement on their account would you suggest per day before you actually try to reach out to them? That's the question from Daniel. And the thing is that I know that you already shared it, but um, that's a really good rule to just 
share it again and again and again, just because this is the right approach to do and people need to understand like it, this. So not like everyone is not missing the, the, the main point. The question is how many engagements on their content would you suggest? And I'm adding before you actually reach out to them and trying to, you know, uh, talk to them. Yeah. So, so in the automation, so the reason I'm not a big fan of it is, you know, someone had posted that, you know, there was a, there was a death at a company and all the automated bots started liking the post. They didn't do the support the post. They didn't make like a meaningful comment, like, sorry for your loss. It, they liked the post. So when I saw that, I said, there's no way I'm going to ever use the like feature again in general. Like, I just don't use it. I think it's very generic and it can be automated. So I, I don't do that. So the first thing I would do is comment a meaningful post. It could be funny. It could be an add-on. It could be a question to the person's post. Like you have a question about it. You know, there's all these different commenting strategies that, that you know, people are recommending, but those are the big ones. Like ask a question, expand on what they're doing, add some additional tip that maybe they didn't post about. Maybe they know about it, but now you're showing their audience that you're a thought leader and that you're you're knowledgeable. So if you're going on to like a Gary V's post, you want potentially Gary V's people commenting on there to engage in your post. So you've got to put a meaningful post to get noticed on those things. And you will drive your ICP. If I go and post on Gary's comments and I do something really thought provoking, my ICP will look at my profile and request to connect with me. And the advantage is you're getting around LinkedIn's rule of 100 a day or 100 a week and your ramp up that you have to do with expanding. So now you can exponentially get followers or connection requests from them engaging with you. So that's what I do. I have a post on my wall that has all kinds of different strategies from all the big creators. Um, but the, like, the two that I think are really good is there's a guy, Sam Brown, with an E uh, that has a commenting guide. He's got 10 tips in there that no one's talking about unless they're talking about his idea for three of them. So that that Sam's commenting guide is critical to learning the 10 ways to do it. And then there's other people like the fist bump uh, tool that will make it easier for you. Because a lot of people don't know what to say and the fist bump gives you some options and you can pick and choose. And it's all done using AI, but it's not it's not automated. But your results will be exponentially more positive than doing an automation in that instance. So let's use ChatGPT wisely. I think there's a lot of use cases. There's a lot of really good use cases of expandy that aren't spammy, right? So doing the polls, reaching out to people, asking them to engage, all of those are great. They're not spammy and they will make your life a lot easier. So let's use the technology, whether it's the AI or the automation the right way. But the ultimate question is why? Like, why should they want to meet with you? So you really have to have a compelling reason, whether it's your profile, whether you've asked a thought provoking question, whether you're pushing really good content, you want them to want to have the meeting with you. And you'll start getting inbound lead flow. And it'll be very easy to have 10 SQLs a month if you're following um, this, this proposal, uh, this proposed solution. So if you wanna see how my brain works, there's three things that have really impacted my social selling strategy. Uh, the first was a, a book called Challenger Sale. This is how I do my comments. This is how I've engaged a lot of people in my sales cycle. This is how my pitch decks are, are done when I actually do make pitch decks. Or if I walk through the meeting without a pitch deck, I use the challenger sale approach. If you want to automate and make your life easier and learn some of the omni-channel tricks and how to do the messaging, Justin Michaels' tech-powered sales is critical. And then the world has changed. So tech-powered sales is a couple years old. Challenger sales is older than that. So what I've had to do is build my own list. And there's a link at the bottom of this, which is the top 100 influencers. These people know what is working in May of 2023. They're not trying to do the failed strategies of the past. So follow the influencers, ring their bell, 
engage with them, especially if your ICP is engaging with those influencers and you'll start having a huge impact on getting, getting to that 10 uh, SQLs. And some of our clients are getting a lot more than that, but you know, that's, that's my goal with my clients. I want 30% acceptance rate. I want 30% reply rates and I want 10 sales qualified leads out of that every month. And I don't want meetings for the sake of meetings. So if my clients can get four solid meetings a month or they get 10 solid meetings a month and that's their goal, then perfect. I don't need my clients sitting in meetings. I need them running their business. And internally, for those of us that own our own agencies, you know, this will help you grow to a million. I'm not saying it's going to get you to Stefan's $10 million number. You're probably going to have to build a team to do that, but you might get to like Justin Welsh at $4 million in revenue as a solopreneur because you're using automation and AI to scale yourself. And so there's a great reason to do the things that, that I'm proposing in, in this presentation. So what else can you do? Obviously, uh, follow, ring my bell and comment on my posts. There's a great commenting post that's out there. The 100 sales influence or 100 uh, tech influencers for tech CEOs is out there. Um, I'm doing a podcast. So as I mentioned, though, you know, we're getting a lot of good discovery calls by just inviting or prospects for our clients on the podcast. So I've got that coming up in June 1st. And then after that, I've got a social selling workshop that will go into a lot of what we discussed in more detail. And then if there's anything that doesn't make sense or you want to talk about it, that's my calendarly. Um, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to walk through if you have more questions about the commenting or the, the scripts that I use in, in my outreach or the auto dialers, you know, just book some time on my calendar and I'd be happy to walk through those things uh, in more detail. And I thanks went two minutes over. Team. Yeah, thanks a lot, team. Uh, that, that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, guys, everyone the, in the chat, just, just tell us, um, like share, like what are your thoughts? Uh, just ask any questions. And I already have um, the like a few questions. So I see that Wal um, asking the question about are we discussing campaign builder today? Actually, the the approach the team shared actually, you know, this is the campaign builder, and um, this approach: follow first, then connect, then do all other stuff. Um, this is this is yeah. This is actually the slide that the team shared. This is the campaign builder. Uh, approach and I will send you all the links after the like the webinar to all the uh, the all the valuable you know content that um, that you might need or that team or I mentioned during this call um, and team are we gonna send the, the presentation to the audience? Yep, we're gonna send out the presentation. We'll have a video summary for those of you that aren't on the call or had to drop off early. Um, so we'll have the video as well. Yeah, I mean that's that's not my question. That's the question from from uh, from Nigel. So yes, uh, we'll send you the, uh, the the presentation and the recording just a bit later because you know it takes some time to to upload the the video and um, within the presentation you will be able to like copy the links and click the links. So no worries about that. Just a few questions from the audience, and we still have like a few more minutes. So if you have any questions, just ask right now because um, we are uh, we don't have too much time and I already have so many questions. So the first question is, are there any specific metrics you look on a daily basis to understand the success of your LinkedIn or outbound outreach? So what are your top three metrics that you take a look on a daily or a weekly basis? So I wanna know what my connection rate is. So most of my clients are getting anywhere from 50 to 90% connection rate. If it's under 30%, that's a red flag for me. Um, for messaging, obviously, assuming you have good email deliverability health, um, I like to see anywhere from you know 30 to 50% reply rates. If it's first degree or you know, a lot of LinkedIn is just warming up your referral network and your current people that trust you. So you should be getting you know, 30, 40, 50% reply rates from them. Um, so I look at that as a metric. And even on LinkedIn to the cold outreach, you know, you should have a compelling reason 
for people to talk to you. So they should be giving you like a 30% reply rate on LinkedIn, even if it's cold. It's just, you're gonna ask thought provoking questions or you're gonna build that relationship before you reach out. So it would be almost kind of rude for them for you to connect with them and then not to engage with you in a conversation if you did all the other steps in advance that I mentioned about commenting, right? So that's a key. And then for me, you know, from a sales qualified lead, it really depends on your bandwidth, right? So if we're ramping up a new sales rep or we're going out to a conference and we're trying to get meetings, then we might be more aggressive. But if you're a founder and you don't have a lot of time and you have a 25% close rate and you want to close one deal a month, then I want to see one solid, you know, sales qualified lead on your calendar every week and that you're closing one of them, right? Because you can't pay for me if you're not closing revenue. So, you know, I think 25, 30% close rate of my sales qualified leads should be a reasonable expectation if I'm doing all my homework right and you're doing all your homework right. So those are my metrics. Connection rate, you know, reply rate, and then obviously the 10 SQLs and then, you know, 25, 30% close rate on those SQLs. Awesome. Uh a few more questions from the audience. Uh, this is the question from Ganesh. Uh, the question is about your tool stack. I know that you already shared that, but the question is more precisely about the email finder. What email finder do you use? Like, and the question is, do you have any tool to get the list of IT hats, emails, and contact details from, from LinkedIn? What is your tool stack when it comes to finding emails? So I use a tool called Wiza, W-I-Z-A dot C-O. So you could pull 2,500 contacts out of Sales Navigator a day, and that's $50 a month. And then in addition to that, I use a tool called Seamless.ai. And you, I, I think it's like three or $400 a month, and you could pull 1,000 contacts down for that. So between the two of them, it's given me a really good stable of data for me to, for me to use. And then obviously there is a tool within Expandy, so you get that data from Expandy as well. So if you don't want to spend extra money, Expandy has the data as well. Yeah, awesome. Um, there are a few more questions. So um, the next question is, uh, I know that you're, uh, you're helping different industries and actually like different types of companies. What, is, what are some, you know, dif different Things that you feel that are different across SaaS and Fortune 100 companies. Uh, what do you feel when it comes to, you know, working with different audiences or working with different ISPs? Like top three highlights, um, like just quickly um, from your experience. Yeah. So if you're selling into an enterprise, there's probably three dozen people that are involved in your buying decision. So what I typically do with my clients is I set up the C-level to outreach to the other C-level, right? The VP reaches out to the VP. And then your you know, AE might reach out to the VP, but then the SDRs and the BDRs are the ones that are really reaching out to the lower level people. So you, whatever you're doing from an account-based manage or account-based marketing or account-based sales strategy, I'm just extending that into, into LinkedIn. So that works really, really well for enterprise. Now, if you have a lot of small clients, then you may just reach out to the owner of the company, but you want to reach out to a much larger pool. So instead of me having like a handful of enterprise companies that I'm focused on, I might have a thousand unique companies with the, the CEO that is, is being engaged with. And even though they might not be on LinkedIn other than their profile, you can at least reference that in your email that you did your homework if they're not active on LinkedIn. And especially with these tech sellers that are IT managers, I mean, they're just not going to go on LinkedIn until they're looking for a job, right? So, but you can at least reference it and show like, hey, I did my homework, right? Because a lot of sellers don't do their homework and you've already differentiated yourself in that, in that case. So it works well for enterprise. It works well for, you know, small to medium. The smallest of the small are the solopreneurs. So if they're coaches, those people are all over LinkedIn, right? So it's a really good way to get after the solopreneurs at scale because there's just so many of them. So I, you know, I think that's an easy way if you're selling to coaches to get in front of them. Yeah, awesome. And mm -hmm. like everyone right now we have 
the time only for two questions. The first question, it will be actually from Dion. Um, the question is, and, and you can ask like any question right now and I will pick only one and that will be the last question. Uh, and this is like the, you know, the right now the question is by Dion, please talk about your phone call phase, how to talk and get them to book a longer discovery meeting. Can you please share it one more time quickly because we don't have too much time. And please, everyone, if you have any questions, just like ask right now, I'll pick only one question and we'll ask team, okay? Um, sorry, you're asking too many questions, so I will need to pick only one. So team, uh, like about your call approach. Sure. Uh, so Ilya, this is Tim Dodd from uh, JTD Group. Uh, just calling to you know follow up on my email message that I had sent you. Then there's something unique about it, right? So now they know that you're following up on their on their email or your LinkedIn or whatever, right? Because the first thing they're going to say is like, "Who's this?" or "I don't know it's him" or whatever. So I interrupt them and let them know the context of my call. And then I ask a question, right? So are you struggling with sales this quarter? Did you have a good quarter, right? Like start with a question and let them respond. And then what I'm trying to do is just book time for them. So I'm not going into a huge discovery. If they say, hey, sales has been great. Awesome. If they say that they're working with your competitor, awesome. Right. And then how does it, how is, how is it working with a competitor? Is there anything you would do differently? Right. So you're just, you're not, you're not trying to get a sale from them. You're just trying to get them talking and you're adding value by asking smart questions. And I, I can, I can add this, the, my call script. I don't think I added it here, but before I send out the final or presentation, I'll add my call script that I use. Awesome. The last question, and sorry, this will be actually the last question. Uh, before I ask that, uh, we shall, I saw your question and actually uh, Timo already shared his tools that he's using for cold calling or warm calling, sorry. Um, and that will be the question from Daniel. Uh, what are the best trending call to actions to increase reply rate? What's your, you know, top two or top one or top three call to actions? Let's do this quickly because we don't have too much time. And that will be the last one. Yeah, yeah. So for reply, I just, I keep it simple. I just ask for their thoughts, yay or nay, right? So that's it. You know, give them a, it's a binary option, yay or nay. And if you send them three emails within three days, they're going to get back to you either way, right? You just want to know if they're a prospect. So, you know, thoughts, question mark, yay or nay, like it, get, it gets me 30, 40% response rates. Okay. So for questions, if you still have questions or he wants to email me, my email is Tim at JTD, John Timothy Dodd group, GRP. Dot com. So Tim at jtdgrp.com. I will answer any questions that you guys email me or feel free to book my calendar if you want to talk through it. Right now, before we finish, uh, I will send you right now the link Teams LinkedIn account. I'm sharing it right now so you can connect with Team. Uh, the next link is my link if you connect with me. If you like, I didn't share too much information today, but still, if you want to connect with me, it's Ilya's LinkedIn here. And um, the Facebook community team is super active over there. So it's Facebook community. Join it right now. All like we'll share so many links in the follow up emails that we'll send to you. But thanks a lot. In just one or like up to five minutes, you will get the email with a few valuable links and the feedback. So please give your feedback. It will help us a lot when it comes to improving the, the webinar series. And before I say bye bye, Thanks a lot, team. Thanks a lot. I'm, I'm extremely happy to have you today. And that was that was pretty cool. I love it so much. And I see that the audience, like Steve, Daniel, like, I mean, like there are so many people who say thank you to you. So, yeah. You can thank me by getting 10 sales qualified leads in your calendar next month. That, that will be more than enough gratitude for me. Okay, awesome, everyone. See you soon and have a nice day. Bye-bye.